All right, everyone. So here we go. Um, you can see that the reason for regulating food trucks is food trucks is obvious. We don't want people getting sick. You know, it's mostly the important thing. So here we go. It explains what a food truck is. It's a mobile food establishment with a menu restricted to foods that require limited preparation and handling. Most food trucks require written health department review and approval before operating, which we will continue on and you will see about. So the best food truck advice ever, don't do anything before you contact the department. Don't purchase a building, don't, well, you're not gonna purchase a building if you want a food truck, but don't pur purchase a food truck before you meet with the Suffolk County, before you make sure that you're meeting with the, the, the health department's requirements. Um, and believe it or not, I do have people, I've spoken to people over the years who have already bought a truck and then they find out what they have to do to make sure the truck is meets the requirements. Bad idea. So please, like, like this slide says, please do your homework. We're going to finish quickly. We'll have plenty of time for questions. Um, write them in the chat if you have questions, but you're probably better off contacting me separately, but I'm, ha I'm happy to stay around and answer whatever we can. Leslie, you're with me on this too, right? So these Absolutely. are the different stay kinds here. of food things that are called food trucks. Um, you have a push cart, you know, everybody knows what that looks like, the small little thing that usually is on wheels and you'll see them around well in New York City. By the way, we're talking about Suffolk County Department of Health. So none of these things refer to anything that's going on in New York City. They have much different regulations. So if you're planning on doing this somewhere other than in Suffolk County, the regulations may be different and you should contact the county in which you're planning to operate the food business, okay? So as you see, we have push carts, coffee trucks, hot dog trucks, frozen dessert trucks, mobile dining vehicles, which means that they put out tables and stuff, um, special event trucks for um, festivals and all of that, mobile fast food restaurants, off-premise catering vehicles, to go to parties, weddings, whatever you have outdoors, and dinner cruise vessels. And it's based on, largely on the menu that you're serving. And I can share this PowerPoint with anyone who, you don't have to write everything down from this because I'll happily share this PowerPoint with you. A push cart must be readily movable and operated in a protected environment. I'm not sure what a protected environment means, but you know that's up open for discussion, I guess. We can find out. Operates in conjunction with and within 300 feet of an approved commissary. And we'll learn more about what a commissary is in a few slides. It's limited to prepackaged, individually portioned food items. We know that you, you do that with like an ice cream truck. I'm not sure what else would be in a, in a push cart, but that is a picture of what a push cart looks like. And beverages must be commercially sealed, single service, or dispensed by approved equipment. Okay. So. Okay, Ronnie, I've got a question about this one. Okay. <sighs> that so. last sentence, you know what dipping dots are, right? Yes. Okay. I saw something at Comic-Con where they were making cotton candy. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if you, if you saw that, if you were in the city. Okay. But I've seen that and they do some very fantastic things with, with exactly. that. Yeah, I've and seen my that. question, yeah. and my question is, uh, would that also, because it, you, it's not prepackaged well, making it on the spot. I would say that they wouldn't have written prepackaged if they were allowing things that were not prepackaged. I mean, I've seen it's not as pretty and it's not as fun and it's not as good tasting to me. The ones, the the um, cotton candy that's packaged, but you see oh, that yeah. where they oh. package it already. 
That's awful. I would think that that's all you're allowed to do with a with one of these push carts. Okay. So, all right, let's move on. Whoops. Okay, and another variety is a coffee truck, which is a vehicle that has a menu that's limited to individual servings of once again prepackaged foods prepared in an approved food establishment or commissary. No food handling or preparation is allowed. Mm -hmm. Now, this refers to a California truck. A California truck operates in conjunction with an approved commissary, which I'll we'll explain what that is in a moment. And the only type of food truck that does, it's the only type of food truck that does not require a review, just a pre-operational inspection. Mm -hmm. And that's because there's no food handling. The food has to come from a commissary. So basically, you know that the food is prepared according to the food, according to the Department of Health requirements, okay, because it's prepared in a commissary and just dispensed through a coffee truck. You've seen right. all those coffee trucks at, uh, at um, construction sites. And, you know, we have one that comes up here to the building and nothing is prepared on the truck. It's all, sometimes it's kept warm on the truck, but it's not prepared there. So a hot dog truck must be an enclosed vehicle. It operates in conjunction again with an approved commissary. And it's again limited to prepackaged, individually portioned food and pre cooked food that requires minimal handling. Okay, so these are all the categories. Frozen Ronnie, dessert truck. Ronnie, do you Plus, want to explain exactly what a commissary is? I'm Googling it. And... Okay, well, it's, it's, there's a slide on that. Okay, thank you. So let's just wait a second. It's, it's a place where food can be prepared. Okay. They have it's a it's like a um it's like our um incubator our food incubator um is a commissary. Okay. Okay. It's where people can go and pick up the food that's already prepared. Uh, so a frozen dessert truck must be self-contained frozen dessert operation in an enclosed vehicle, as the one you're seeing, the Mr. Sophie truck, right there. It uh, is equipped to produce frozen desserts and milk products. It has the machines right there in the truck. It operates again with an approval uh, with the approval of uh, a commissary or depot, which is the same kind of thing that just dispenses the prepared foods. Um, it sells only commercially prepackaged single serve frozen desserts that do not require a permit, like a Good Humor truck or Mr. Softy. Although it says commercially prepackaged single serve frozen desserts, we also know that the Mr. Softy trucks dispense the soft ice cream right there. So I don't know that that explains that part. So if anybody has a question about that, we'll have to look into that a little further. Mm -hmm. So this is a mobile dining vehicle, which is an enclosed vehicle in which foods prepare, prepared in an approved food establishment are served for on-vehicle consumption. I've never seen one of these locally. Has I don't know if anyone else has, but I've never seen a truck into which you go or in which you go into. A cafeteria on wheels. Some have vending machines used for temporary or emergency food service and it once again operates in conjunction with an approved commissary. It's accessible during all hours of operation. I have never seen one of these no. in Suffolk County. If anyone else has, I'd love to know about what it is, where it is. I've never seen that. And this is a special event mobile fast food restaurant, which is again, a self-contained vehicle used as a temporary food establishment like a sausage and peppers truck, food prep is restricted to minimize food handling on the vehicle. Right. Special event vehicle provides an itinerary of events. They'll tell you where they're going to be. And it once again operates in conjunction, in conjunction with an approved commissary. Okay. I believe a commissary can also be um, like a kind of a deli operation, but I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure. 
off-premises catering vehicle. An off-premises catering vehicle, as we probably have seen, is this once again a self-contained vehicle used for preparation, delivery, and or service of foods prepared as part of a catering operation. Sometimes people have events. Uh, I've, I've known people to have um, special trucks come for weddings or, or special parties that people put on. And it's kind of fun, actually. Um, you can do that you know, for any, any special event that you're having. Food handling on the vehicle, once again, is minimized. And it once again operates in conjunction with an approved commissary. So we're seeing this as a very important thing um, to, to work with the commissary. Vehicles used for local delivery of prepared foods. We did this slide. I don't think that, that anybody is going to be doing a dinner cruise vessel, but let's see what this says. Um, it's a self-contained watercraft in which foods prepared in an approved food establishment are served operates in conjunction with an approved commissary or docking facility. So it seems as though the food handling, obviously it says on the vessel is minimized. For those of you who've been on the ferry that goes from Port Jeff or the one in you know, Orient Point, I think this is what they're referring to. I don't know that this is a, it's a dinner cruise vessel, but I think that the, the regulations would be the same. And you know what you can get on the ferry. Most of us have been on the ferry. And also, so, Ronnie, there, there's, yeah. a, there's a new thing I saw, which now I realize is really nice. Like people who have, I don't want to say a historic boat, but have restored boats. Mm -hmm. And if, if you can fit a, a couple of dining tables and do them up very nicely, they go out for sunset cruises. And yes. I can't think of the name of that sailboat that's out in Greenport. They, they've got two of them. They've got a small steamship and a sailboat. And they go out for dining cruises. They don't have food on them yet, but who knows what they're going to do no, well, pre pandemic. Well, I have been on um, a, a boat like that where a caterer brought in food into the, into the place. So they're not preparing it right there. But like they said, they're preparing it probably on the dock. I mean, no cooking is being done actually on the boat. But they had, it was wonderful. It was just like any catering establishment. So. This is a very confusing slide to me. I've seen this slide before and the arrows go from here to there, from here to there. So I think you have to sort of, I don't know, we can set, you can look at the slide again or we can talk about the process. But obviously you have to submit applications and the plans, which we, there's another slide that shows you what the plans look like. Um, they review it, there's a fee. And then once you submit that, the department reviews it within five days. Who knows what that process is now? Like I said, it's so messed up now that they, they've been hacked and there's it's a real problem getting through to anyone. Um, but they will notify you if you have missing information. And then, of course, you have to provide that information and maybe add another couple of days to the process. Um, they will help you. Right now, that's a very difficult thing. Once again, there's a five day, they give you five days to do it. Then they approve the plan. Um, you can construct the vehicle and do whatever modifications you need again. And then there's an inspection and eventually you will get your permit issued. Okay. Let's move on. So, Plans may not be required if your vehicle has held a permit to operate in Suffolk County within the previous two years as the specific vehicle type for which you are applying. Plan review is not required. So if you buy a truck from someone else who's already operated the truck and within two years has had the permit issued, it appears as though you do not have to go through the plan, the re plan review process. Applications and forms must be submitted. All fees must be paid and the truck must still be inspected in order for a permit to be issued. I'm happy to know all this. I hope you are as well. The inspections are conducted Monday through Friday. It says between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. at the Suffolk County Department of Health Services in Yapek. And that is the phone number 
keep the phone number, but you will not reach anyone <laughs> until they figure out what happened. I mean, I can't believe how long this, um, they're not, you know, they were asked to pay a ransom and they did not want to do the ransom. So now they're trying to figure out ways to get everything back up online. If you do get into a website, there are, they do tell you things because they sort of made it possible for people to learn certain things, but it's, it's really been something. How long has it been, Leslie? It must be almost a month since we heard they were hacked. So completing applications and forms. So you have to identify the truck type which for which you're applying, complete all the forms in the plan review package for the specific truck type. Um, I, you may or may not be able to access the online forms. I don't think so. Um, I can try to get them for you if you're really in a rush and you can't wait until they're back online. You can contact us and I'll see what I can do for you. Um, you need to gather all the copies of the requested business documents. That's nice to know what they are because you do have a little time to do that, but I'm not sure you can find out what they are if you access this, um, this website. Review the regulations for the truck type plans. Um, for example, you need two copies of a top-down review showing all the equipment and two copies of a side view showing the water waste and hot water supply. And then, of course, you submit it. So here we go. What is a commissary? It's a food establishment or facility permitted or licensed by the Suffolk County Department of Health or other agencies. Location is where the food trucks are cleaned, supplied with water, food, single service items, and where wastewater is properly disposed. Commissary functions may be provided at multiple locations. Okay. So you would have to get in touch with us to find out about the commissaries. This is an example of the sample plan drawings. You don't have to be an artist. You don't have to be a drafts person. Um, we can try to find out, you know, who, if you are unable to do a plan drawing, let me just go up a little bit here. So why don't we stop here for a second? I guess they want you, like they said, they want to see specific things. I'm sure that they um, give you an idea of what the drawings need to have. Um, I'm not sure if they'll help you find someone who can do it for you, but we can look into this more. I was hoping that someone from the Department of Health would at least join us towards the end of this workshop to answer specific questions, but he's unable to do that. So I'm certain that I can help with any additional information you need after this workshop. So this is a good slide because it tells you what some of the most common deficiencies are when people um, submit their plans. So this will save you time some people don't submit it with the full menu. The forms are not complete. Plans are drawn incorrectly not to scale and not all equipment is shown. So you just can't sketch this on the back of a, of a napkin, okay? You need to have, um, it needs to be drawn to scale. How you do that is something we'll have to help you find out, okay? There are people that can do this for you and schedule a meeting. If the plan needs revision, meet with the plan reviewer to ensure success next time. This is all to help you save time, but please don't do anything until you've completed all the requirements. Don't spend any money. You can meet with us too. You know, um, we'll also help you with the forms of business. I'm not sure, it doesn't say here, but I'm not sure if you can be a sole proprietor. I'm not sure if you have to be an S Corp or some sort of corporation, or an, I know you can be an S Corp and an LLC and do this. I'm not sure if you can be a sole proprietor. A sole proprietor doesn't provide you the protections um, that the other forms of business do. And I'm not sure if you can be a sole proprietor and just have insurance. You may be able to, but we have to look into that for you. So that's that's something that I'm unsure of here too. So once the plans are approved, 
then you can go forward and construct, build, modify, purchase according to your approved plans. Make sure all equipment is working properly, especially refrigeration. Schedule a pre-operational inspection. Once again, you'll have to come through us because you won't be able to reach anyone. At least I haven't been able to. So. Then there's the food handler training. A person in charge who possesses a food safety certificate from an approved authority must be on board during all hours of operation. So if you have the, the food handler's license, you can't hire your nephew and your son or your friend's kid or, or your friend to operate your truck. The person with the permit needs to be there during the times of operation. And the menu determines the type of cert certificate required. And there's a recertification that's necessary every three years. Once again, I'll be happy to share the slides with you so you have all the contact information and hopefully you'll be able to get in touch with someone soon, but we are available. So this is where you can sell your food. You can sell your food at roadside peddling and vehicle storage parking regulations are determined by towns and villages, not Suffolk County. So you can't call Suffolk County to find out where you're allowed to operate. That's determined by um, the towns and villages. Okay, you've seen trucks by the side of the road, on the highway, on let's say 347 up here where we are. Um, I imagine they get their permits to operate there through um, the town. So town hall, Suffolk County town hall, um, and Farmingville would be able to answer that question. But if it's an incorporated village, you'd have to go to the village hall there. Okay. So for certain frozen desserts, they have roots and territories that you can't go into somebody else's territory if that's their assigned territory. Same thing with coffee trucks. They have assigned territories. We here at the university, we have a truck that pulls up here, a food truck, and they have the license to be here or permit or whatever it's called because this is their territory. So another food truck just can't pull up where somebody else has been uh, approved to go. All right. Um, you can sell it at private businesses, but you have to be, a, you know, accepted by the private business to to go there or, you know, you can't. Same thing with fairs, festivals, carnivals. They have to be approved by usually the promoter. Whoever's putting together the event. All right. So. This does tell you that for questions, you can call them. Happily, happy to share the information with everyone. If you get through, lucky you. I was unable to do that in the past several days. And I even spoke to someone at the Department of Labor because I do have that person's cell phone. And I told them I was doing this workshop today, reviewing this these requirements. And I said, do you have any information about when things will be up and running? And she said, no. We know nothing. They share nothing with us. So I'm in the dark. And even people who work for the county seem to be in the dark as to what's happening and when they'll be up and running. I wish I had more information for you, but I just don't. Um, I'd love to open it up if anybody has any questions right now, or if you want to reach us you know, another time I'm happy to share the original slide. Um, let's see. So that's what I believe. And um, like I said, please get in touch. We'll find out. I don't want you to be in the dark or spend any money on something that you can't do. So please. Yeah. Yes, Les. Okay. Um, da -da -da. Maria would like to know how long is the permit process? And she heard it took it takes time. Well, it's going to take a lot more time now because. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, they said in, in the, one of the slides that it that it, they approve it in five days, that they'll let you know within five days of receiving it. But then if there's any problems with your permit 
and you have to put it in again, it obviously it could take another five days. So you want to make sure that you have everything that's required before you submit it. You know, like I said, if you draw the plan on the, on the back of a napkin uh, and you do it yourself and it's not to scale, it's not going to be approved. I mean, they're very specific about this and understandably so. We want them to be properly done. So, and then I, I do, you know, I do know that you have to have it actually visually, you know, somebody has to actually come into the truck and make sure that everything is the, is the way you said the plan is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a, it's a process. So let's find out everything you need to make sure that everything is, is done properly before you try to start the business. That's all I can tell you. Listen, it's like any other business. I have people that come to me and tell me that they're opening a retail store or some kind of other business, and they've already started paying rent on the location. They've signed a lease. And I think, no, no, that's... You're moving and, too fast. And also that there's something else that a lot of people are, are, aren't thinking about, but because I'm the front desk receptionist, I hear it all the time. You may, you may want to start this truck and you may say, I'm going to put it in this particular area because I know this type of food is popular in that area or it's not. And we're going to do demographics for you. We're going to tell you if your taco truck where you want to put it, if there aren't already taco restaurants, drive throughs or whatever, and are you swimming against the tide? So, you know, that's another reason for you not to put money into this before doing research. And the SBDC is an absolutely free of charge place to get your research done. We have a research network library in Albany. This is what they do. Hmm. And this will help absolutely. you out as well. And, and that's true. We do have a library. That's great. And for those of you who live anywhere near Center Reach or Selden or want to access this wonderful library at the Middle Country Public Library, there's um, something called the Miller Business, Business Center. Center. It's actually within the, inside the library. And if you have a library card at any library, I always told people that if you have a library card in Suffolk County, you can access the Miller Business Center. But I actually learned the other day that if, if you're in Nassau County, you can still use this business center. Oh, really? Yes, because I had a client who was in Nassau County and I spoke to Elizabeth, who, you know, we, is part of this Miller Business Center. And she said, oh, no, they can use it, especially if you tell them that you're working with someone from the SBDC, us. Mm -hmm. um, we work very closely with them. They have tremendous amount of information. They have librarians who are just dedicated to the Miller Business Center. And if you want to find out any information, the better the information you give them, the better the information you will get back. You know, garbage in, garbage out. So it's like anything. If you are more specific about what you want to find out, um, you know, they'll give you better information. So absolutely, their, their services are free. And, you know, if you want to access databases that you can't access, they will help you. Uh, Hector, other questions? Yes. yes. Hector, the name and location of what? Of the Miller Business Center? Okay. It is the, yes. you can actually look up millerbusinesscenter.org or, yeah, or just Google Miller Business Center. It, it's a not-for-profit, so it's a .org. And it's, or you can get, get it through the Middle Country Public Library, Center Reach Branch. Mm -hmm. They have a branch in Selden, but the Midler Business Center is the second center. floor of the Middle Country Public Library, which is an excellent library. I told you about the workshops that we run. They also run very good workshops. Yes. They're also free of charge. They do a networking night. They do a lot of things to help and promote small business and we work very closely with them. So, you know, I, I just think that people that are in business, one of the things I often tell people is get the information, ask as many people whose opinion you value. You know, lots of people have lots of information. Somehow you can narrow down the important things by talking to a lot of professionals. 
So, and even people who are in the industry, you know, ask someone who has a food truck. Some people will share information. Some people may not be so willing to, but certainly it's, it's worth just talking to anyone who you think might have valuable information. What, what do you lose? A phone call, an email. So we have a lot of information for, a, we, we do the same thing. When someone calls me and asks me and I don't have the right answer, one of the great things about the SBDC, the Small Business Development Center, are the resources that we have available. I've been doing this for 23 years and I've developed an amazing network of resources. So we're, we're able to get you information that you not, may not be able to get. So please, please call us. Leslie is there. She's a, a just a fountain of information, right, Les? I try. <laughs> I hear you all the time, although not so much now because we're working hybrid some days in the office and some days from home, but we're still available. So anything, anything else you want to know about the SBDC or food truck business?